In the Revishal Citizens Militia, there is only one Officer Superstar. This is his story. Okay, here we are at the church. I fast traveled here. The sign reads, Sent Brune 1147. You feel the shadow of a very large building fall on, it, on you. You see that? Dusty pews in the shadows. Many seem to be missing. Okay, we'll go inside in a minute. Let's see. Oh, a little money. Good. We need money badly. Take all. 51 cents. Not a huge amount of money. An altar shrouded in dark or something like that. It's too dark to tell. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Okay, guys. Come on. What are you doing? Anything over here? All right. Let's just go inside. Stop, uh... Avoiding it. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock, carelessly drilled into the wood. There's another padlock. Padlocks are our nemesis. Let's take a closer look at the padlock. This cheap-looking padlock is sturdily built. It shackles together a hasp and a staple screwed into the wooden door. The lock is adorned with a yellow sticker. It'll be easier to break the staple than the lock. Also, that sticker is interesting, somehow. Okay, let's look at the sticker. You see a yellow circle with two X's and a big curve below them that looks like a mouth. You're pretty sure you haven't seen it before, but what the symbol depicts is clear enough. A smiling dead guy. The curve makes it smile and the X's make it dead. There is something blindingly modern about this symbol. Its modernness puts to shame everything you've seen before. What makes it so modern? It's the contrast between the cherry chemical yellow and the rigor mortis. As if the cherry guy didn't know he was dead or the dead guy didn't care that he was. Either way, you get the sense the forces of future are at work here. Have you seen this symbol before? Point to it. He takes off his glasses and uses a blue handkerchief to thoroughly wipe them clean before inspecting the sticker. Then he looks up, pauses, and replies, No. <laughs> that was a hell of a lead up. Well, what does it look like to you, Cam? Looks like a dead man smiling. Suggests junior delinquency. And what's junior delinquency? For Evashol ZOC. The moral intern defines junior delinquents as minors between the ages of 10 and 16 who have committed an act in violation of the law. These acts aren't called crimes as they would be for adults. Crimes committed by minors are called delinquent acts. This was part of your officer's exams. He puts his handkerchief in his coat. What is suggestive of junior delinquency here, Cam? I haven't seen that sticker before, and I'm not a youth. I agree, it's very modern, but does the cheery guy not know he's dead, or does the dead guy not care that he is? What is the source of the irony here? That level of conceptual thinking is not part of my skill set. <laughs> Let's try to peel off the sticker without ripping it. We have an 83% chance. There's nothing like the sound of a sticker unpeeling. Now it's stuck to your thumb. So we can toss the sticker, or we can put the sticker in two different places on our ledger. Let's put the sticker on the ledger uh, right on the cover like people put stickers on their laptops. Voila, looks very modern. Oh, we completed a secret task, style our paperwork. And we got 10 experience for it. You're part of the future brigade now, and so is your formerly humdrum ledger. Neon, baby. Oh, we're part of the future brigade now. Ooh, I wonder if that'll help us with uh, Cindy the Skull. Okay, let's inspect the staple. The padlock passes through a staple that's been hastily attached to the wood. Closer inspection reveals that one of the screws is not a screw at all, but a nail. The work has been done recently and is unprofessional, to say the least. Yeah, so it's clear we're going to be able to break in here. Should you want to get through, it might be easier to just pry the whole thing off. Okay, let's turn to Kim. This is where Mr. Prybar comes in handy. Maybe we should circle the building first and look for another way. The building has seen enough mistreatment. Okay, all right, where do you think we should start then? Can you hear the pulsing bass underneath the wind? A sure sign of junior delinquency, somewhere east of here. Okay, we'll look around in a second. There's something on the sea ice there. Inspect the carpentry. The carving on the door is block-like and angular, 
like the church itself. Two large beams shoot downwards, sinking into the wood before they reach the threshold. Let's run our hands over the beam. The surface is smooth from the wind, but moist to the touch. Let's rattle the doors to see if they open. Nothing happens, only the sound of the padlock rattling against the door. I don't think that's going to work. No, it's not. Okay, so before we apply force to the padlock, we're going to take Kim's advice and walk around the building. Let's see. Well, it said it was to the east, which I think is that direction, but let's go over here first. Oh. Oh, here's the phone booth that we can... Or, well, I think the other phone booth is over here. Yeah. We haven't talked at this phone booth. Okay, no, no, we're not using the phone yet. We need uh, more magnesium to make it through there. Plus, that's going to that's gonna take some time, some effort. What do we have here? Anything? Hmm, I feel like we went the wrong way. Oh, what's this, though? Okay. <laughs> this barrel has been recently discarded. It still smells of fuel oil. Oh, man, really? People are polluting? What a shock. <laughs> These rusty gears used to turn the whole machine. The building before you housed the engine. Must have been a big one. The chain trails off into the ocean to who knows where. An old door, worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. What is this thing, anyway? It's military. A service depot of some sort. Used to service what? The washerwoman mentioned a depot up the coast. She said it was for moving ammo and cargo across the bay. This might be it. Oh, interesting. So they pulled stuff across the bay. It may have been used to service an aerostatic battleship in the atmosphere. Or a fortification. Like a sea fort in the bay. There's a red impossible interfacing check here that we only have 3% on, so we're not going to do anything with it yet. Let's walk away. Just as a reminder, if you're just tuning in to the playthrough, a red check cannot be repeated and has a... The success or failure has a uh, an effect on the game. A white check can be repeated. Here's another one of Morel's traps. A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds. Another one of Morel's traps, weighed down by stones to keep it in place. Let's look around. The reeds sway in the coastal breeze. They seem to be waiting for something. The wind picks up here, near the cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. Okay, let's reach for the trap, see if there's anything in it. You can see the locusts moving around. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. I wonder if the cryptid is somewhere in these reeds right here. We're looking right at it. Another empty trap. How are you enjoying the cardio, Lieutenant? I'm quite enjoying it myself. Always up for a good job. Otherwise, would I still be on this case with you? He smiles and raises his collar. It's windy. Let's look around? No, leave. Wait. Nothing no, no, no. has changed about oh. this trap. Okay, sorry. You need to check the others. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Oh, look, there's a bird over here. Let's walk over here. I think we did go the wrong way around the church. We'll have to go back there. Someone's made a campfire here a long time ago. A rusted broken control box for the radio relay tower. The ladder is too rusty to climb. The sea air has eaten away at it. Oh, there's a box over here. Maybe we can get some money out of it. Oh, there's something here. Oh, a tie. Plus one shivers, minus two physical instrument. Wow. Hmm, scented scarf. Tiny inlets there, off in the far distance where the posts trail toward. So, hmm. Um, I like our drama tie. Okay, let's head back to the church. Anything over here? No. Hey, now would be a great time to hit the thumbs up and possibly leave a comment. The almighty YouTube algorithm loves that. Anything over here? No? Oh, there's that. Okay, we haven't been up there. That's on the back side. 
Let's see if we can do that. There's the depot we can get into. Oh, a box. Oh my gosh, more clothing. Plus one rhetoric, minus one empathy. White polo shirt. And 14 cents. Oh, what was that noise? Okay. Okay. Well, it looks like there's a ladder up here on the roof. Okay, we're going to go around this way. This is the way we should have gone to begin with. Oh, okay, can we get over here? Anyway, hold on, let's check this out. They must have taken a lot of patience to do this. Yeah, it looks like somebody made a cairn on top of a post. Oh, there's a dude. Let's check this stuff out first. Painted with pastels, someone is trying to bring cheer to the world. Oh, maybe it's this guy. Damn, it's cold outside, he says. Trash from some un unending party. I can hear faint music. A pole screwed into the ice keeps the tent erect. More tribalistic markings. This post is covered in little humanoids. A pane of etonite has been planted into the snow. Two poles are holding it up. Barely holding it up. It could fall over any minute. A stronger gust of wind might be enough. What is this? It looks like a makeshift bridge. Could be convenient. It sure could be. Let's push it over. The pane falls into the icy snow with a soft thunk. Nice. I hope we didn't piss anyone off by doing that. We should ask that girl on the ice what's going on here. The lieutenant gestured towards the young woman next to the tent. Agreed. Let's talk to her. Oh, it is a girl, I guess. Hard to know. Oh, here we go. A shaggy looking girl in her late teens or early twenties kneels on the ice with an electronic contraption in her hand. Hearing you approach, she looks up. Hello, lady. Oh, hello there. Hi. It's cold out here. But she's not wearing a hat. She must be freezing. Oh, yeah. Look at all the snow. Everyone knows drugs make you invulnerable to cold. You bet this one likes to party. Dear child, it's freezing. Where's your hat? Oh, that, what? No. How about, I have some questions for you. He's not going to party with a girl. I'm listening. A cold wind blows in from the sea. She breathes on her fingers for warmth, looking up at you. What's your name? A cell. Oh, a cell who? I'm not a young suitor. This is official police business. Okay, it's Burger. A cell Burger. A very common name. And what's that device you have there? This is a portable recording device. It's for field recording. Low quality, but still. And the wires? Actually, just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. What's a contact microphone, a cell? A contact mic records sounds from inside things, like this ice. Oh. Your mangled brain would like you to know there is a boxer called Contact Mike. Okay, thanks, Encyclopedia. Ah, yeah, Encyclopedia. Any news on my wife's name? How about my mother? No. Ah, you're useless. You're welcome. Does this have anything to do with Contact Mike? Uh, yeah, I record stuff with it. No, I mean the boxer Contact Mike. Ah, uh, no. This is a contact microphone. It's for recording inside solid objects. Contact Mike just beats people up. Oh, I guess he's pretty famous if she knows who he is. That's not fair. And an understatement. <laughs> it's complete. I'm gonna do it. You know, Contact Mike doesn't just beat people up. Contact Mike is a role model. Um... Yeah, I wouldn't know what to do with that either. An entire litany spews forth. Holy cow, holy cow. On second thought, screw Contact Mike. He's not a champion. You are. Look at you here in front of the saggy tent, picking your nose to drug addict music. The world of sports is in awe of your faith and dedication. Man, you are one weird cop. I'd say I'm just about normal. Now, about that Mike. Not Mike. Mike. You do understand it all just sounds like Mike to me, right? <laughs> How does it work? The Mike? I don't exactly know. Somehow it doesn't pick up vibrations from the air. The book said it only picks up structure-born sound, if you like technobabble. I guess I like technobabble, I don't really know. 
Where did you get the mic from, Acel? Same place I got the recorder from. The Palaceum. What's the Palaceum? Oh man. You haven't been to the Palaceum? It's the coolest place in this whole drug-addled shithole. Oh! Drug addled, huh? Maybe we can get more meds. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop on Boogie Street in Jamrock. Musicians live there, like real musicians. I once saw Arno Van Eyck. No way. Sounds like a place for congregating homosexuals. Is that is that relevant? I guess it's no less relevant than the whole contact mic thing. Sounds interesting. Who is this Arno guy? Oh yeah. Guess you wouldn't know Van Eyck. Or really be a Palaceum going kind of person. I get down, a cell. Don't belittle me. I don't know what that means. I grind. I don't know what that means either. Nor do I, but I have concrete evidence that I rock in the form of a wrecked tape player and a completely trashed hostel room. That's cool. She breathes on her fingers. Looks like she doesn't know what to say. You're right. Time has deserted me, Acel. Sucks, man. Oh, we damaged Was there Elmer something out. else? About the contact mic, perhaps? Actually, I had some non-mic questions for you. Okay. What are you doing out here in the cold? Recording, I guess. And what is it exactly you're recording? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice. But there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps too. Not sure how that will sound. Wait, what happened to the headphones? My boyfriend sold them. What for? Drugs. I don't know, man. Things. Just stuff you need for life. Not a very good boyfriend, huh? A lie. They were probably pawned off for something suspicious. And what are these recordings for? The cracks, the footsteps? The musicians in the Palaceum used them for making music. They looped the stuff, cutting the tapes together. They make music out of cracks in the ice and keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. It actually sounds really neat. Just not. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be, like, a music place anyway. She rubs her shoulders and looks around. The girl is cold all of a sudden. Very cold. I don't really know what I'm doing. They use synthesizers too. I don't have a synthesizer. Oh, that's unfortunate. The sharp drop in endorphins is almost visible. Like a warm blanket has fallen off her shoulders. The wave of chill. The quivering jaw. Indications of a drug high. Ah, I see. Take this, you're cold. The lieutenant begins to take off his jacket. No, man, fuck that, I'm cool. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. It's okay. The lieutenant backs up. He throws you a glance. Do we want to give her our bum hat? I like our bum hat, but... Ah, uh, let's give her our hat. Here, you need this more than I do. Thanks. Uh, I liked our bum hat. You said it's supposed to be a music place? What is? That. The boys think it could be a place, like the Palaceum or something. Stupid. It's really not going to be a palace, and that's for sure. She's talking about the church. The boys? Yeah. Andre and the guys. They're inside. In the tent. And why is that? Why are you freezing out here while the boys are inside? They got too much stuff crammed in there. No room. Stuff like what? That seems really rude. Music stuff, mostly. Like this tape recorder, but bigger. And there's piles of it. You mean like those headphones your boyfriend sold? Yep. They were pretty. I'm sorry we sold those. Why not just leave some of it outside so you don't have to freeze? That stuff is more expensive than I am. More expensive than any of us, really. Doesn't matter. I can take the cold. Huh? I'm not so sure of that. This is how people die. I had some other questions to sell, I guess. Go ahead. We did give her a hat so we get a bonus on this. I don't remember what our, our bum hat gave us. I hope it wasn't empathy. Well, tell me more about this music place you've been planning in the church. It's supposed to become like a club for anodic dance music, like that new style of synthesizer stuff they play at the Palaceum. Except that, yeah. She looks at the old wooden church up on the poles. As a mean wind comes bellowing in, the six-story structure lets out a doleful shriek. Yeah, it's not very stable. The floorboards are twisting, and the shooting beams are slowly cracking, like bones, far east of the Golden Delta, beyond the industrial port. There is a black patch of unlit coast with the smallest creatures on the ice. There will never be a club for anodic music here. Not in a million years. What is anodic dance music? You know, anodic, cathodic, music that's made with electronic instruments. Oh, oh, that's neat. Anodes and cathodes, I wasn't getting that. Electronic instruments, like what? 
synthesizers and tape consoles, microcomputers too, anything that uses electricity, but isn't guitars. Also found sounds, stuff like that. Cool. This is an evolutionary step up from amplified instruments, which in turn are a step up from acoustic instruments. What comes after it, you wonder? A black tinted nothingness or something finer? Ooh, maybe they can make music out of the pale. So you want to turn the church into a club, Marcel? I know. It's not my idea. Andre and the boys found the place. It was supposed to be deserted, but now they can't even take it. Hey, don't get me wrong, but you're cops, right? Yes, why do you ask? Okay, well, maybe you could talk to Andre and the guys, because there are some strange things going on in that church. If you're police, you should look into it, right? Yeah, I'll talk to them. They're inside that thing there. Would be cool if you did. Was there something else? Did you put the padlock on the church door? No. No? Not really, no. Not really, what does that mean? She's trying to get out of a direct lie with semantic tricks. She personally didn't put the padlock on the door. Okay, if you personally didn't, then who did? Yeah, you know, that's what I meant. Noid did. Noid put the padlock on the door. Wait, is this Noid a friend of yours? Yeah, I guess you could say that. And why did this Noid person put a padlock on the church door? To keep more weirdos from getting in. Fucking Martinez. I'm sorry. It's got the worst weirdos. If you get around to it, ask Andre about him. He'll tell you. Okay, enough about the church then. I had another question. Go ahead. Actually, that's it for now. Okay. Bye. She turns her attention back to the recording device. Acel's friends are very chatty, so we will venture into the tent next time. If you like what I'm doing, hit that thumbs up. Regardless, please ensure you spay or neuter your pets, but not both. <laughs>